here's a quick lesson on how to use the sampler. So first off I'm going to get my audio file which is uh, the TED Talk Mark Ronson file where he talks about sampling. I just rip the audio from the TED Talk and I've dragged it into Logic. First thing we need to do is to chop up the sample that we'd like to place inside the sampler. So for that I'm just going to zoom in, find a transient I like and by that I mean a sound that starts from quiet, gets louder and then goes back to quiet so I can chop up a single sound and then right about here is where I'd like to chop it up. Let's see what it sounds like. Watch, watch. Okay. So I'm now going to press tool, get up the scissors, which shortcut is I, and I'm going to chop up the sample at either end. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to give myself a little bit of space to work with. And I'm going to apply a fade on either side of this. That's to stop any um, pops either side as the sound doesn't go directly to um, full silence it still has a little bit of a waveform so by doing this I can make sure that there's no clipping and popping I'm then going to bounce my file bounce um, the audio region in place and sample one I'm going to call it I'm going to put it on a new track, right there. The reason to do this is it's created a new file that I can find in Finder and I can also export. Uh, but also, these fades that I applied, it, acts, it has actually applied them to the audio file. So, first part of using a sampler is editing your samples. So, collecting them and editing them. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this audio region into a sampler track. To do that, you right click or control click and you convert to new sampler track. And then you get this information here at the top. Um, create zones from region means this entire um, rectangle with all of the information on it. Uh, um, alternatively, you can um, click transient master where it will use uh, an algorithm to scan all the individual sounds. Um, the next thing you need to do is make sure you name it properly so you can find it in future. And then um, make sure you set the trigger note to C1 and in brackets number 36. That's so when you play C1 on the keyboard you can find the sound. Once you've done that press OK. And you'll see that this has become grey and it's become muted and a brand new track with a sampler icon has been created with a MIDI event, a green MIDI event with a MIDI note in it. If I click on here, I can see my note is in C1, and whenever I press C1, the sample plays back. And that's the first way of loading up a sound inside, um, inside a sampler. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to uh, take this to the next level and stretch the audio file further to the sides um, so that you can play it faster and slower and at higher and lower pitches. So to do that what we need to do is open up the instrument that is located on this track. Now there's this really simple way of doing that is to find out is to view this instrument's mixing channel and to do that all you have to press is I for inspector or this button up here and right there I have the mixing desk channel strip for this channel here and on it I can see the EXS24 plugin and it's called a sampler and it has the sample one TED talk being loaded up into it. If I click on that I can see it's right here and although it might look confusing it's really not that confusing. It has a cutoff uh, filter section over here which you can turn on and off and then once it's on you can filter the sound. Uh, you've got high pass, low pass and band pass filters. You can add resonance and add drive. The other thing to worth uh, worth noting is the ADSR envelope on the bottom right where you can change the ADSR of the sound. And then the other thing um, that you need to know about is this edit button. This will open up the database where the sound is located. So if I press edit you'll see uh, it's a big table 
and the only thing in it is sample1.aif, which is the sample that you bounced out, that I bounced out earlier on. And it tells me uh, the key where the sound is, the original sound will be played, which is C1. And then if I play any of the other keys, I won't get anything. If I go to key range, I can lower this, and you should be able to see the blue um, region at the bottom increase in size. And what that means is I can now play it. The whole keyboard. So the key range is how you're able to play a sound back in different pitches. Um, if you want to disable that, you can just disable pitch and now play back the original sound wherever you press a key. Uh, the one shot feature means it doesn't matter how long you hold the sound for, you hold the key down for it will play back the full sample. With it off, you can play a bit more percussively. Reverse flips the sample and now it plays it in reverse order. Once you've set yourself up and um, you're happy with the settings, close this and make sure you hit save. And then when you've done, you can close this as well. And then make sure you save your file properly by clicking file save and then ticking this button here. Copy the following files into your project, the EXS instruments and samples. That means you can then travel from one computer to another computer with your file and it will take the sampler with you. If you don't tick this, the sampler will only be saved on the machine that you're working on.